Hello, and welcome to the Scottish Clans. I'm Clint, and I am excited to talk to you today. I'm so excited. I just learned some things, some really cool things lately. I've got a few shout-outs to give because that's people were very kind to me and allowed me to learn these things, and I can't wait to give them credit for it as well as share the things that I actually learned. Let me give a quick shout-out to my sponsor, USA Kilts. They, I'm so glad that it's it's the warm season now, and I'm going to be wearing that kilt a lot more. I've already worn it a little bit, but I really look forward to getting into it and getting out. Now, I say that they're surprisingly warm in colder weather. You'd be surprised how not cold your bare legs are if you got like some good socks and shoes on. However, it's sure enough time to put that kilt on and get going now. So I'm really excited that I've got a USA kilts kilt and that mine is in the mcfarland hunting tartan and i've got a bunch of other things to go with it that i got from usa kilts and i'm excited about it and it's such good quality stuff i'm also um they they keep on putting out awesome content on their youtube youtube channel usa kilts and celtic traditions so i'll I'll get more into that later in the mid-roll but for now let me tell you what i am going old school with this. I started off podcasting with a little clip-on-your-shirt mic, and that's what I'm using today. So if the sound isn't quite as tight as I've been able to get it lately, then that's why. Because I'm up in the mountains right now. My son's mountain biking down some trails. It doesn't make any sense for me to drive all the way home and drive back up here and get them. So I thought, how could we use that time? I'm going to sit down and do a little little recording up in the mountains. So it's beautiful up here. It's green this time of year. And I'm using my old shirt clip microphone. There's probably a better word for it, but that's what I'm using. So I apologize if there's if the sound's not quite as good or if you're picking up some background sounds. But but that's what I'm doing. And it's it's really enjoyable, actually. Maybe at the expense of a little higher quality sound. Um, here's, I got a question for you guys, and I would like you to put the, put the response to it in the notes on this. Now, I don't know all the different platforms people are listening to this podcast on, because if you have it published on Apple podcasts, then it automatically publishes on, I think I recently heard 39 other platforms. That's a lot. Um, I will catch it if you put it in a review on po- app, on Apple Podcasts. I will catch it if you put it in the show notes to this podcast on, I mean in the comments rather, when I make this Facebook post on the Scottish Clans Facebook page. And I also will get it if you send me a comment on podbean.com for this. And the link that you may have clicked for this, will take you to podcast, uh, Podbean, even though you can get it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify also, Spotify. I rarely get, I don't think I've ever got any comments on Spotify. But here's the question I want you to reply with. If you could refer this, it, which I hope you do, I hope you refer this podcast, if you could refer this to a friend or friends, and you wanted because not everybody's equally interested in every pod in every episode I've done. Some people are beginners and they just want to hear a cool story. Other people want to break it down academically, understand what the real deal is going on with clans. So if you were referring this podcast to a friend, what episode would you refer to them? Which one would it be? I'd be really interested to hear your responses. So if you could reach out and in the comments on... Apple, like in a review for Apple Podcasts, podbean.com, or the Facebook group on for Scottish Clans, the Scottish Clans Facebook group, any of those for, in, in, the, in the comments for this specific episode, because I can't, I got to narrow it down a little bit. Please, please reply to that question. That'd be doing me a, I'm just curious, like, because I refer this to other people, but I know that Certain people aren't, especially straight up beginners, there's going to be certain episodes that are better than others. So I give them specific episodes to listen to. I'm curious to how you would answer, well, where should I start? Will you send them all the way back to the beginning, back to the intro and the stuff on the early groups of people that the clans come from, like Dalriada and 
the Picts or the Strath- Strathclyde Britons or the Vikings, who those episodes back there, or was was there one somewhere in the middle where you're like, now you got to listen to that one? How would you answer that? I'm look, really looking forward to seeing your answers. Okay, now let's talk about what I'm so excited to talk about to you today, and that is a, an interview. I've mentioned Bruce Fumi with Scotland History Tours before on this podcast. Once again, he's coming at it from a different angle. And and guys, I want you want to be clear that I'm not looking at this competitively. I'm not competing with Bruce. I'm not, and, and Bruce, because it's a YouTube channel, he's not competing with my sponsor, USA Kilts, because they've got a, their own little f- flavor on things. Sometimes our subjects overlap, but that doesn't mean we compete with each other. I've mentioned Mike from Clans and Dynasties on YouTube. I've men- mentioned Phil for Irish Medieval History, and those guys team up all the time. I, we're a community of people who love Scottish history, and... I, I, I love these, these different people who are chipping in and adding their perspectives and the information, and all from a di- little bit different angle. So, but this today, I got the information I'm getting today from Bruce Fumi from Scotland History Tours. Now, he has a, uh, if you just subscribe to him and join his patron group, he shares interviews with specific Scottish um People, I don't know, just people who are into Scottish history would maybe know these people. Um, Recently, he went to see, and I think this was just actually on the regular YouTube, but he went to see a person who makes Scottish kilts in Scotland, but more from like an historical perspective. Um, But he's had, for his patron group, he's done interviews with, with scholars that I've mentioned on this before, like Martin McGregor, like... And yes, McConaughey. Um, I'm trying really hard to do well with that that Gaelic name there, but I probably butchered it. If you guys can send me a very phonetic, better way of pronouncing that, I would love it. Anyway, these very the people that I have read several of their papers. Not not I've heard of their names before, but I know I'm familiar with these people. In fact, both of those that I just mentioned, and I'll throw Allison Cathcart in there. Those three. I reached out to for help with my thesis on finding sources and they gave me some great leads in, including hooking me up with some of their own works and and gave me some really good feedback. So my master's thesis I should specify. So so I've known about him for several years now and now Bruce Fumi is getting personal sit downs with him. And you can see those if you go subscribe to his patron. Bruce is not sponsoring me to say that. Um, I don't get anything out of that other than he and I are exchanging professional courtesies, and on my end, I was allowed to see this interview. He shared the link with me that usually only shares with patrons. And so to, so I'm going to just hit some wave tops that I got from him, some very exciting wave tops from me. I hope they're helpful for you. I don't know if they'll be as exciting, but super helpful in understanding how clans work, if that's interesting to you. If you want to know, how did clans really work? And we want to clear up some of the misconceptions that I've seen all over the discussion on this on the Facebook group. There's arguments going back and forth and on other Facebook groups where I post my podcast and, and people are coming back and making this claim or that. And I'm always interested, like, so what do you have to base that off of? Well, today I'm going to share with you a couple of this, the high highlights that I got from Bruce's interview with Martin McGregor, Dr. McGregor. I'm so excited for this because it we talk about this subject all the time on here. I tell you the conclusions that I've come to based on what I've read. I share my sources with you. And here's something that just nails it as far as some of those t- topics of discussion. Okay, so let me start with, with this topic of discussion. Were the Scottish clans, did they only exist in the Highlands or did they exist throughout Scotland? Or did they only exist in the highlands and borders? That's a big deal. We've talked about it a lot on here. I've shared my conclusions. If you've listened to other episodes than this, you know that I lean toward a kin-based society was, pre- was present throughout Scotland. Throughout. Um, it looked different in different areas. But a, kin, a, a kin-based society to one degree or another was present throughout. Okay. So, Bruce in his awesome questions that he asked 
Dr. McGregor, got him to talking. About, I can't remember the exact question he was that asked him. But Dr. McGregor, in his response, when he shared it, I was so excited. Okay, so let me tell you what Dr. McGregor shared. He said that, first of all, the term clan system was used in the question. Dr. McGregor says, and I think the question was somewhere along the lines of, was the clan system only a Highland thing or did it exist other places? Dr. McGregor said he doesn't like the use of the word clan system because it makes it sound like a very um, set in stone... um, it, it implies uniformity really, where there really wasn't any. And he, he, and I don't know if he used this word, but I'm going to go, I'm personally, me, Clint, gonna, I'm going to reach out to John Bannerman, who talked about a kin-based society. And I think that Dr. McGregor would be more okay with that system, but he didn't like, he did not like the term clan system just because it makes it seem like there's something that was set in stone. It was super rigid. And to be honest with you, that's how it's been pre- uh, presented in a lot of sources. And the chief did this, and his interaction with the, the rest of the clan was this, and here's the boundaries of the tribe, and with this is the structure, and this is how it all worked. Now, I don't want to maybe trash all of that concepts, but let's not get too set in our minds how things were like we've said over and over and over again on this podcast that it's things aren't in this nice tidy little box and you can't just categorize everything super nice and this goes over here and this goes over here and this is the way this was that's it wasn't it wasn't so tidy like that um so that's point number one he didn't like the the word clan system or the term clan system but check this out Dr. McGregor said that at one point in time, maybe at its peak during the 1100s, the Gaelic language is spoken throughout Scotland. But when we talk about Gaelic society, we're not just talking about language. We're talking about a culture and a way of setting everything up. And this, this kin-based society that the Gaels used went clear back to their Dalriada days. But now as they've expanded, the Dalriada royal family has intermixed with the Pictish royal family, at least the leading royal family, and they have produced the McAlpin dynasty, and now we're getting down farther and into the Canmore dynasty, and we see the Gallic culture at its height in Scotland during the 1100s. It spread to almost every part of Scotland. And then... So it peaked, and then we see this gradual recession. But as it retreats, it's almost like in my head, the glaciers during the Ice Age. They reached so far across the world, and so they they pushed so far south. And then as the Ice Age recedes, it leaves behind these very significant signatures on the landscape around it. The Gallic language did that. And you can look at where Gallic was spoken, even though it hasn't been spoken in some of these areas for hundreds of years. These place names throughout here are Gallic place names, but Dr. McGregor added to that. It wasn't just personal and place names that the Gallic language left behind. It also left behind how society was set up. Society was set up along kin lines. Long after the Gallic language had receded from an area, that system was left behind. So even in lowland areas that haven't been Gallic-speaking for generations and generations, you still have a kin-based society left over from when that was a Gallic area. I thought that was brilliant, and it helped me answer so many questions. Some of these questions got to settling in my mind when I was trying to really make a serious study of the of the the clans of Scotland and I'm I'm seeing in like a Rick Wikipedia article and it's only talking about the leading kindred within that clan within that kindred it's only talking about that leading family and it really like it doesn't make it look any different than an English arist- aristocratic family 
they have a father and he had this title and these lands in this area and he passed it on from him to his son and then his son did this oh and this other guy somewhere about this time who also had the same last name don't they don't mention any blood connection to the original group they're talking about he was also had this position in Scotland and we're all supposed to believe that, or assume that they just connected into this specific kin group this, that we would call a clan and and they didn't they didn't connect the dots very well for me and I was like is this really a clan or is this just a and so then I got to wondering did did clans to what extent did clans exist in the lowlands I know they existed in the borders something that looked like a clan the borders may not have used the word clan but it sure was a kin based society very reminiscent of Highlanders anyway I thought that was fascinating that was one of that was one of the major major things I took away from that interview now there was a lot more to that. And before I get to my last point and the last kind of uh, highlight of something I learned from this interview between Bruce Fumi and um, and Dr. McGregor, I just want to give another shout out to my sponsor. Look, if you are looking for any type of clothing to express your pride in your Scottish heritage or your Welsh heritage or your Irish heritage, please go to usakilts.com. That's their storefront, usakilts.com. They give free shipping to anybody in the continental United States. Maybe it was the United States. I know for sure the lower 48. Can't remember for Alaska and Hawaii. But um, I have a USA kilts kilt, and I love wearing it. So I recommend them to you. A very high-quality material that they make. They, have, they take a lot of pride in their workmanship. They've got a little something for everybody. The kilt's generally regarded as a male garment. I'm not trying to make rules for anybody, but uh, they've got stuff for ladies on there too. So go check them out, usakilts.com. Also check out their YouTube channel, USA Kilts and Celtic Traditions. That's where you can go not only to learn anything you want to know about wearing a kilt, the history of kilts, how kilts are set up, why is there such thing as Welsh tartans or Irish tartans. They've got just loaded with content on all that stuff. They also get into Scottish history, uh, Celtic history in general. They get into cultural things and how do you what's some tips and tricks for going kilted at a renny fair a renaissance fair anyway um that's that's some uh, the content that you'll find on their youtube channel i really recommend it and i've watched some of their stuff very recently not because i knew i was getting ready to record a podcast but just because i saw it on my youtube feed it recommended it and i thought hmm, that looks interesting and i clicked on it and i learned some stuff so i i recommend you go check out their youtube channel as well all right, so one last thing that I got into with this that I thought was awesome with this this interview. So after time, so in a, in a clan, you had a, a leading kindred within that clan, and then you had these other people that are more distantly related. And you have, you have the chief, you have these sons. One of those sons will be his heir, whether you're using the system of primogeniture or tonistry, Either one, you're going to have somebody that's going to be his heir. And then what happens to the other sons? The daughters will probably um, be strategically married. Um, I don't get the impression that men or women were marrying for romance and love at this time period. But the daughters will be married. The sons, whoever they married, they would be given specific lands and titles within the territory with you know something that the chief already had but as time goes on the degree of nearness to the main line gets more distant and more distant and as you know before long i mean how how aristocratic is the chief's fifth cousins now in the irish clan system they this is very very specifically spelled out and there is different degrees, and there's different Gallic words ending in fina, and like der um Yeah, anyway, I don't know. All, I can't remember all of the different degrees and the different words, but I watched a whole video on it. Actually, uh, Mike at Clans and Dynasties has a great video talking about Irish and Scottish clans, and he, he explains the structure really, really well. But uh, it's was, it was very spelled out. Uh, we can maybe think that by assumption something similar might be going on in Scotland, although it might be also wrong to assume that just because this was how the Irish clans worked, that's how the Scottish clans worked too. So um, I'm not going to talk about things there that I don't know about. But one way or another, the, 
the more generations go on, the farther out this people. So now we're we're not. It's the chief's. You know, I'm I'm the chief's fifth cousin. Am I? Where am I at with my standing? With am I noble still? Am I? You can see that the farther away from that main family you're related, but but you carry within your family this tradition that you are connected to the chiefs. You are nobility, and the the same value system that is upheld at the very pinnacle of the clan system, the very highest echelons of their society, is being pushed down as the succeeding generations grow more distant but hold on to the fact that they are connected to that main branch. And these are their values, and this is what's important to them. Those values permeate down through the different levels of society. I thought that was fascinating. And so you have this this clan where the chief and his family hold these certain values but also very distant relatives of theirs who might be viewed as just regular everyday joes and uh, jeans i don't know whatever everyday folks hold a very system a very similar value system to what the chief and his family and his near relatives hold so i thought that was really interesting this this shared cultural heritage throughout um that that's my that's the main thing. So not a super long podcast. Let me reiterate my invitation I made to you at the very beginning. If you were going to recommend this podcast to somebody and you wanted to start them off with the best episode to start somebody off with, which one would it be? Would it be laying the foundations at the very very beginning of the podcast or would it be the most what you found to be the most interesting podcast and which one was that? If uh, obviously I'm talking to people who have heard this isn't their first time listening to the podcast. So you've been listening to this for a while, which one would you choose to share with people? Please respond either in a review for Apple Podcasts, in a, in a comment on Podbean, scottishclans.podbean.com is where you can go, or on the Facebook group for Scottish Clans. Just called, it's just called Scottish Clans. It's too easy. If you, uh, if you want to reach out about anything else, those are great places to do it. Um, guys, my sources, I told you what my sources were for this. Um, this is Bruce Fumi with Scotland History Tours and his patron, his subscribers. This is a the whole interview. Go there and see, you know, become members of that. See the whole interview. It's got tons of good stuff. I loved listening from start to finish, and so I recommend it to you. Um, but I I pull from a lot of different sources, and that's one thing I feel very strongly about is my information is only as good as my sources. If you want to know what sources I've got, go to scottishclans.podbean.com, click on the sources menu, and I've got a long list of things that I draw from on there. It's not an exhaustive list. I'm still adding to it, but it's got a list of PDF, like links to PDF files that you can download for free. It's got links to academia.edu articles. That's a free membership, so none of this is costing you money. But it's also, if you want to actually get a book in your hand, it's because you prefer it over PDFs or because you just um, it's not available in PDFs, then I've got some affiliate links there. And actually, that's one way you can support the podcast. I don't have a patron, Patreon group or anything like that yet. But that's one way you could support is go look at those sources through the affiliate links to Amazon on there and grab one of those books. You're still getting, it doesn't cost you any more to uh, purchase the book. Um, and you, you get an awesome book. Like Stephen Bannerman's The Campbells. Gosh, that was awesome. And I've got ap- episodes coming up on sharing some of the things I learned out of that. So stay tuned for that. Um, and also share this episode with somebody you think would like it. I hope you I hope you do. And until next time, Marshan Leven Drasta.